Now we are live. Hello everyone, this is Ninja DC. Joining you again for another React video, this time for My Little Pony, Season 8, Episode 4. This is getting very confusing. Uh, joining me again is a herd of bronies. Hello, all the ponies. I'm a herd of bronies. Welcome back to Let's Watch Season 8. Very nice and concise, I reckon. In this episode, we get to explore Fluttershy and see her many sides as she tries to run a store. I didn't know that, so... Spoilers! Yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. Well, I don't need to watch the episode now, guys, so I guess that's that's it for me in the React. Uh, s s see you around. <laughs> <laughs> don't you want to see what happens, though? <laughs> there might be a twist at the end. I don't know. <laughs> All right. No idea. Going in completely blind. Mm -hmm. Alright, girls... I thought you said girls for a second. I I confused. Oh, 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 Made for shopping spree, going out Century 21, and oh, buying some new seats. You gotta get blind, gotta get dressed up, gotta show them what you gotta do with makeup. You gotta be beautiful, <laughs> gotta be the greatest. You gotta be fashion, you gotta be aesthetic, you gotta be the epitome of beauty. Ladies and gentlemen, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing that's the persona theme. No, it's not at all. <laughs> I, I mean, you were like, just talking about the song like the song like... of Sex in the City, actually. That oh. was what I was going with. Is that, is that so okay, I'm in it in a while. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Goodness uh, gracious. I'm <laughs> good at I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Mm. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> really has. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I missed you. I missed you guys, too. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least it'll make for like an interesting lineup. Yeah, totally. yeah. Rounding it out, Quillo. Yeah. They, they. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Nice. Um, coming to you live from the guy who just got smacked in the face by a Vive controller. Uh, <laughs> Good day, collaborators, and welcome to Eight Bit Reactions. Uh, I'm glad to be back after a, a long time of silence. Um, and this 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 series was actually how I was keeping up with the um, episode, so I haven't actually seen the majority of them since the last time I was in one of these calls. So this is going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't 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 wait to watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Is everyone ready though? Yep. Yes. All right. Press play in three, two, one, play. Alrighty then, Fluttershy Sanctuary! Mm, I told you it was a Fluttershy episode. I knew it. Aw, Angel's not having any munchies. <laughs> oh my god, don't give me flashbacks now! Oh. Okay, 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 it's better, it's better. That was a really old flashback. <laughs> Yes. Oh dear God. I knew that wasn't gonna last. Oh no. Let us talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, come on, she can knit a lot better than that. No more cross stitches! How do you knit with hooves? Or wings? 
with difficulty, apparently. Look, it, darling. This is Manhattan's busiest shopping season. And I can't just close the shop. So I was hoping you might consider running it. Oh, this is going to be a Manhattan oh, episode? Yeah. Well, I may have asked you. Oh, no. Oh! We've got a wonderful show coming up. Oh, boy. Piling up. Piling up. Over me. Nope. Oh! Under the cast? But I hear Fluttershy's break. Wow! Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you say address that? That's good. <laughs> that was a nice little touch of people being asked. I got it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you know, honestly, starting with Rainbow Dash is probably a horrible choice. Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Twilight, no, I'm not just one reactor happy. <gasps> what is oh, this? This is. <laughs> what is oh, yeah. this? When did they change this? Oh, oh last, last episode. episode. Last episode. Spoilers, by the way. Oh, yeah. Don't watch. <laughs> they, kept, they kept the old one for the first two, then they switched it out to the new one. Ah, uh, all, of, all of this. That's nice. Mm -hmm. And now it fits with the purple logo now. We're in the purple <laughs> seasons now, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> Darling, it's easy to trust. The store is divided into sections. Modern, sophisticated, and obtuse. Obtuse? Hey, hmm. dress is entirely made of obtuse angles. <laughs> okay, what's with. Oh, it looks like Arabic numbers. What, what, what do you think numbers are? No, I mean, like, the like Arabic Arabic number <laughs> <laughs> Alright, they're dumbing down Fluttershy too much so far. Neon okay. pink mane pony. Hello. Um, welcome to Rarity for you. What can I help I love how there's no music. Oh, that was perfect. Aye, classic, but modern. Something with drama, but also understated. Drama and yeah, understated. Yes. It's. So, but how can I? I'm sorry. Are you asking me how to do your job? No. Mm. I just um. If I may, I'm thinking noir esque minimalist. But with a twist, perhaps a tapered hem. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Oh god! Not <laughs> the not the Ritz girl laugh from anime. God damn! Wow, that was beautiful. Oh, darling, come now. You conquered your shyness a thousand times over. Wow. I feel like it's not exactly shyness, but also just knowledge of fashion. Customer service. Yeah. Customer service is not shyness. Like, that is a totally different beast. Mm. It's resisting the urge to not be murderous. Aha, <laughs> 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 uh -huh, the poses. Yes. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Twisted turns. Oh hey! Is that a Megan McCarthy pony I see? Yeah, probably, actually. I can't believe they kept the continuity of those workers. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, that makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> And I'm sure they'll have me to run my hands <laughs> <laughs> That animation, though. I don't yeah, I know, know right? why Smokey Jr. has the blue eyes. <laughs> to show his adorable. <laughs> mm. You know what they say. Clothes make the pony. Mmm. You know, them. Them? <laughs> them. Who are them? Who are them? 
<laughs> I like how calmly she walks out of the store when everybody else was. Mm. Oh no. Okay. Ooh, here goes nothing. Go get him. Welcome to Very For You. What can I help you with? What's the thread count of this shirt? I can't be seen in anything less than a thousand. Um, thread mm. count? Um, well, I'm not sure. Oh. Let's see. Um, one, two, three, four. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know enough about fashion to satisfy these guys. Oh, God. What am I this is. <laughs> This is like the second time Rarity has done this to like one of her friends. Yeah. The first one didn't go so well for Applejack and her like ability points. Mm. But then again, Fluttershy was her last choice. Yeah, that is true. Severe, but not unapproachable. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> that sound like a shop point to you? I love the buns. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Today. Yes, well, I still haven't had an answer on this thread count. I think it has a question. In that case, I'll take three. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, it was a hard sell. Relatable. <laughs> Same. I just have to repeat it for a few hundred more. Oh no, he's getting the wrong idea. Oh, no. This is what happens in Rarity. Ask her to act, and also she hangs around Discord too much. Oh no. You are wicked. Can't about fashion show or no. I simply can't leave Fluttershy to fend for herself with these main hands. Wow. Look out, I'm afraid I can't shop. Potential emergency at the boutique. Well, whatever it is, I'm quite certain the pony you left in charge can handle it. Oh, she's simply divine. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't trust a secondary source of information. Rarity, what are you doing? I don't know. Don't you mean Chevron? If I had meant Chevron, then that's what I would have said. <laughs> of course. Oh, God, a certified coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they've got like aprons too. <laughs> aprons. Also tell shiny, and I'm just not seeing anything nearly bold and shiny enough. I'm afraid bold and shiny won't work with your whole model. Perhaps pointy. Point. Pointy. Yes, I must have pointy. Point. Gotta get the point. <laughs> 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 Oh. Oh, jeez. God. A red carpet glitz and glamour gown. That's all. Whoa. Cool, but like, still artsy and a total head turner. Yeah. Uh, casual chic prêt à porter is very branché this season. Uh, like I don't understand any of that. So like, I don't care about it. Uh, <gasps> one moment, please. <sighs> Oof. We're talking about a head party here. <laughs> that animation for it was perfect. Oh, jeez. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, God! It's oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's perfect! Uh, oh, God. Oh, he's woke. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, 
No. <laughs> How many joints does he smoke before getting in that okay. concert? Store is a desperate wasteland of nothingness. Please don't let there be high kitchen parts. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. It's Fluttershy of the Evening Tide. Yes. Uh, that jacket completes me. What? It tastes like lukewarm. It's fairly drinkable. <laughs> oh. 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 God. Lit. Oh, hey, Inky. Oh. Oh. Okay, now you're just being full know. on condescending and denying. <laughs> you're wrong, and here's why. The speed at which she's managed to um change clothes. Ooh. Oh, jeez. Yes, he's. Yes. 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 How did you clean all of it from that? I, I kind of like it when people do that. It's like it's like a similar thing with Applejack and Big Mac. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> Oh my god, she's not going to the, the, the position. You are kidding. This is worse than we thought. She's being horrible to every pony. Uh, are you sure that's even Fluttershy? Maybe it's just three really, really fast ponies that really, really look like her. Well, let's find out. Hey, Fluttershy, are you running the shop or performing at a one pony show? If you don't mind, I can only improve the taste of one customer at a time. You have to wait your turn. Oh. Honestly, these small town ponies have the big thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Just a small town pony. We're worried and we care about you. Let's get out of this aura of positivity before it consumes us. Whoa. <laughs> They should have, like, stayed there. This shop is like a no rodent zone. Oh! Oh! I understand why well, you have to act I just love it how she's a different costume every scene change. <laughs> every scene, yeah. So right. Please, step this way so that we may discuss your concerns. I knew you'd come to your senses. Yeah, you literally should be bamboozled. Be kicked out. <laughs> bamboozled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that's kind of a piece of my collection. Oh, hey! Sassy's also there. You Their ears. Why didn't you say that from the start? Come on, 
<laughs> I put her into this position! Like, this is so not like Fluttershy. <laughs> I have lost my ability to even. Mm -hmm. Oh, and... Hi, Daniel, dear. This is all talk if I can forward to the likes of you. Well, I never. <sighs> Told you it was bad. Bad? This is worse than I could have possibly imagined. It's the worst thing ever. Been having, like, the store closed down for a bit in the busiest season. <laughs> oh my god, Fluttershy! Fluttershy develops split personality syndrome. Multiple personality disorder! God dang! I think we're gonna. Discord apparently is contagious. I go try. <laughs> okay, Pinky! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. Totally <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> good, good lord. What customers? What <laughs> 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 the moral. Oh no! <laughs> oh. Good lord. <laughs> no, Fluttershy, you have multi personality disorder. Or she's the most brilliant method actor. What? Too much. Doing that as well. Striking dress, Rarity. I certainly hope you aren't trying to undercut the royal fashion show by ducking out and debuting it here. What? No. I, I, have you considered the possibility that the royal fashion show is trying to undercut Rarity by continuing on in Canterlot and not moving the whole affair here? Have you? Uh, I. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> well then. Well. Um, <laughs> well. That's a pony of many personas. The the ability for Fluttershy to directly and immediately integrate into a character after merely putting on the costume. <laughs> oh my it, god. Yeah. It's uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah. It's sort of like, like in real life, like people could easily do that, like depending on their psychosis. Just well, I don't think like, it has like a. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's that. Like, even right now, uh, me personally, I have a different sort of persona that I put on when we do re reacts than is when we're just hanging out 
versus when I'm with someone in person. Mm. Like the the levels of energy change based on which uh, like setting I'm in. Like mm. it, yeah. it's not that severe, you know. <laughs> it's not <the laughs> like, kind of disorder. I mean, there are cases of which it can get that severe. I but mean, the, the, the thing it's about like varying levels. This, this I defined. understand it as varying levels, but the uh, the big point of contention with Fluttershy's level is that she immediately went out of the role as soon as they were quote unquote terminated. So like she she didn't have them as like personalities that stuck around forever. Oh, like oh my god! Oh my god! I just realized something. What? She was acting like Roger from American Dad. Yeah, exactly. That's what. Oh no, I, I think Maris and I can marry. No, 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 no. no. Like, there was an no, episode think... in which one of the personalities got so right that he managed to put a hit on himself. Like, that's how crazy that the cartoon decided to put it. It was that. Level. But, uh, the thing I was about actually compares now as you knew this in this series is Discord. Like I said, he's the one that will often have a conversation with himself and oh, yeah. multiple oh, personalities yeah. switching up. That's what I was saying. Like, uh, yeah. Discord is sort of like spreading to a Fluttershy in this case. He's oh, she's picking up some dis- yeah, she's picking up some of Discord's talent. This is Discordism, <laughs> Discordisms as it were. Discord. Discordism. Yeah. Uh, this certainly was um, a different take of a of, of Fluttershy shy moral episode. Which mm. kind of combines like hints and pieces of like, uh, you know, uh, pu- uh, putting your hoof down, but also a bit of a, like uh, confidence from like saying like silly vanilla. And it's just like, okay, let's just put all that and combine that with like uh, dressing up and uh, going with like different personalities to match the culture of like the town that you're in or, or Saddle Row as it were. And it's like, like, we're already were saying, like, uh, I didn't want to get any, like, a, one of those bad, like, Saddle Row residents to, like, take over my shop during, like, the busy season. And I'm like, okay, on one hand, it's like, you're kind of insulting your uh, clientele. But then on the other hand, it's like, a lot of retail people can easily be like, yeah, we deal with, like, some of the worst people around. I didn't <laughs> want to hire one of those worst people around to, like, show off my brand. Mm. Is, it, is, it, is it an insult or is it just reality? <laughs> it's reality. <laughs> The, the, there are some problems I feel with the hiring situation just because this is not just like, a, oh, we'll just cover the sh- watch a shop and sell stuff. This is like very, very precise retail work, which like, okay, Rarity, like no matter like excluding all of your assistants, no one you could have put there could have really done this job well. Like this is a very like bad, like this is basically doomed to fail here. <laughs> Yeah, like let's see. Like, it was almost about- like she took advantage of the fact that Fluttershy is so nice. Mm. Um, the, Fluttershy is like, yeah, I'll, I can, yeah, I'll try it. I could try, and she's like, oh, thank goodness, somebody said yes. Somebody you know, <laughs> out of everyone, <laughs> or you're just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> mm. um, I should probably ask Fluttershy last because I know she'll get a yes from her. <laughs> wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Uh, it's just funny that she asked Granny Smith and Big Mac. Yes. <laughs> like hey, what? What would they know about fashion? <laughs> Dude, just, I can just imagine Big Mac in a dress, r- <laughs> trying to run the um, the the shop. <laughs> well, I think we might could have got like an alternative episode in which Big Mac might have brought out that certain personality. We have had Blossom. this episode before then, with mm. with when Cherry Blossom was a thing. Mm-hmm. Or not cherry. What is it? Uh, Orchid blossom. Orchid blossom. Orchid blossom. Yeah, I was like, wait, you said, you know, I said <laughs> cherry, and then I was like, oh, wait, that's not right at all. Um, <laughs> Orchid blossom. Yeah. But like, we have technically had this episode before. Mm-hmm. Um, this mm-hmm. one pushed it a little bit into the uncanny valley, just like when Rainbow Dash had that one episode. No, yeah. No. Well, yeah, it, 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 it pushed it pushed just a little bit close to that. No, I I don't see I don't see like Newbie Dash was, uh, was about impressions. This episode was like uh, going for like three completely different sonas and acting them out at the same time. Like it does have more relevance to like um Brother Who's Social, except for the fact that Brother Who's Social's uh, main point was the cross dressing in order to like be a sister in that episode. Which kind of put like those uncanny, uncoverable valleys for some people, while other people can just d- derive from like the hilariousness of it. This episode feels like a sort of like a nice spiritual successor to the Saddle Row review, 
in the setting alone, but also just being like, hey, let's continue on and show like a like rarity, like with like her like with like her um assistants essentially like all working together on this big uh, fashion show. Meanwhile, like a uh, uh, keeping up like business on like in a in like in Manhattan essentially, and it's just like you're doing so much at once, and it's like I didn't want to lose all this money. <laughs> So it's like I kind of shot myself in the foot with like a, like um with like the end result of like Fluttershy just taking uh taking like the worst qualities of Saddle Row citizens just being like you're trying to help my business, darling, and it's just like you kicked me out of my own shop, and then it's just like oh, I'm gonna need to fire you, I'm gonna need to fire you, and I'm gonna fire you, and then it's like oh, episode resolved as soon as Fluttershy's like back, being hired three two different times, just. Yeah, like this thing over my own complaints. My main complaints actually, I felt the episode got better as it went along. It just felt like some of the things, like it's like where they had like, oh, I can knit something, and it showed like something horribly knit. Like Flourish, I can knit better than that. Like you don't mm. need to, like. First what of all, like, to Fluttershy's freaking knowledge of sewing. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, from season one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think, and also like when they're running the register, like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. Like, come on, like she can. Like, you don't need to, like, drive out how uncomfortable Fluttershy is at this. Like, when we move on to the fashion elements, yeah, it's understandable how she has no freaking idea, like, what to pick with the customer's, like, specific taste and all that. Like, yeah, that's stressful enough. You can just jump to that. You don't have to, like, say, oh, I don't know if I can do Like, that's – Fluttershy is a lot smarter than that. Like, any of the uh, main six are smarter than that. Yeah. yeah, I'd imagine they'd be smarter than that. Uh, <laughs> um, but I feel like – like it didn't linger on that, and I'm I think I could only like yeah. really commend Fluttershy's personas in that in the sense where she realized that as a retailer that doesn't exactly exactly know the field in which they are retailing, she realized that she doesn't actually need to answer the quest the exact questions about the field. She can sort of like manipulate and substitute the um the question and phrasing in such a manner that like makes them answer their own question without having to have any input from her. So like, like I can only really come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was I can only... I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can only really commend that because of how well she executed it. Um, yeah, that's so um... like the, the thing I, the thing I was trying to get around is that it didn't it did the story didn't focus on her lack of knowledge and fashion. It kind of like used it as a technique to drive the complication forward <laughs> oh and that's what i was trying to say is like i got better as it went along where as it when it moved on to just fluttershy running her shop to her fluttershy jumping into fashion when it moved over to that like everything like smoothed out just like that earlier bit just felt sort of awkward um but i felt it went on better get on and Again, also, I like, actually, that was the point I was mentioning you want to make. I was like, yeah, I like how it was more about Fluttershy taking on a persona and like basically bullshitting herself out of like explaining, like getting the customers to get whatever they they really want themselves, sort of thing. Like, <laughs> they believe yeah. what they want to hear in that respect. Mm. It, it kind of. Like, the thing that really has me, like, feeling, like, chopping at the bit about this episode is, like, it felt very awkward what it was trying to display, like, uh, in a cartoon setting, like, uh, how to interact with, like, uh, unruly or uncooperative clientele, because it was, like, um, trying to be, like, uh, assertive in the way of, like, trying to uh, answer back with, like, a, with, like a, a negative to the question while showing more confidence and, like, being, like, I'm smarter than you in this case, and, like, uh, they were just being, like, Okay, if you show like this air, I truly believe you in uh, partake in like uh, purchasing these uh, items and such. Though, like at the end, it felt like it really had no idea where it was going until like when everything was like falling down, which is like a uh, you got unreleased to the point of like I know better than this, or I'm just feeling like depressed and such about this like shopping extravaganza right now. <sighs> I think the the point of the episode wasn't specifically on the customer service stuff, though. It was on how a persona can help you feel more confident, but letting it grow to such an extent as it did causes more problems and harm than good. Mm. I think that was like... the goal of the episode. It wasn't focusing on the customer service, like this is how you help customers. It was on 
the sonas and how they negatively affect your surroundings. There like, was a whole more of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. And that also is like, I feel very modern moral because especially in like the YouTube community and all that. Mark, exactly. Exactly. It's very easy to create personas or like just sort of a den easy hide behind. And I often find the best YouTubers are like, I don't even know another term, like uh, YouTube fame, like just sort of like that level, of like celebrity where like the best ones I find usually the ones that make it clear, like outside of the videos that, yeah, that's a persona. Like mm -hmm. I, that's not actually me or something like that where they try to differentiate themselves. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the same thing that goes with celebrities. Yeah. With acting and um, the whole method acting thing for like theater and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Or in like in movies that goes to the extreme of like say Jared Leto from one year ago. Yeah, you know, the thing is, like, I feel method acting doesn't get as much attention towards it because, you know, just because of the way it's being filmed, um, we don't actually get to see them on set and all that act in that persona. Right, right. So it's basically, mm -hmm. yeah, the rest of the crew suffers, but like we mm -hmm. as an audience just hear like the most humorous stories from that. So that's why we I feel like we don't really see the persona issue too much in traditional acting, even though it is there and has a long history of being a part of it where like um, method acting is a very valid form of acting. Mm -hmm. But with like the YouTube community, like it literally is like daily video and stuff like that. So we get to constantly see their personas. So, like that's why it feels more prevalent now, even though it has existed for like centuries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The distinction between persona and person has only really been, um, yeah, as you said, it's only really come to light in the era of, um, uh, YouTube persona persons. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then YouTube also, I guess, Tumblr and other like social media counts as well. Yeah. Mm. Online mm. platforms are really easy to find something that you can show to the quote unquote camera. Like Facebook does that all the time <laughs> where people are like, oh yeah, I'm at this event and taking pictures and, and instead of enjoying the moment they're, they're, they have to prove that they were there. Mm. You know, it's, mm. that's something that I've noticed on Facebook at least. Um, I don't use it as often, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a trend that you have noticed. <laughs> yeah. It is a trend that I've noticed with a lot of the people that I both follow and are friends with because everybody essentially has a stage now there is no like separation yeah really. it bleeds really easily into our regular lives for us mm -hmm. like yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean like even now like even if like i say like this current persona of mine is like me when i'm happy when i'm really not happy that's still kind of like a nice little separation of like you're keeping your online self like a uh, separate from like your personal junk and such you know it's like mm -hmm. It's like synonymous now, thanks to like the spread of the internet, and like, and you can even show like hints of that, like when in school and such. Like, uh, if you show like a different face, uh, like uh, to like your parents and or your, uh, uh, compared to like say what you show to like your um your um, fellow students when like uh, hidden away from like uh, everyone else, like you show them like your rough side and such as a bully or something like that. It's like that kind of is like. Yeah, like different faces like people might have like when people are not seeing them compared to like the face you want to show to others. Like it's like people want to be like more appealing and or more destructive depending on like what they're going for. Mm. I feel like tying that into the episode, they really conveyed that well. It was mm. a nice controlled environment to showcase something like that. Because they don't have, you know, the internet. They don't have things that they can share like that. Um, it's just in person, you know. So, yeah. like, the fact that it was a controlled store environment where she could explore those kinds of sonas in order to uh, both, like, connect um, with the client and to avoid the kinds of questions that they're asking uh, one thing, actually, really quick, one thing that I really appreciated was how they showcased, it's very subtle when you're, like, first watching it, I'm just thinking about it back uh, right now, is that Rarity showcased all of the positive aspects of what a persona can do. She hmm. 
She mm-hmm. had the confidence and the ability to like stare, essentially stare down the customer when she did, because that customer was showing the rowdiness side towards Fluttershy. And so when she stepped in, she had to have the confidence and the, uh, I guess, wherewithal and experience to show that she's not going to back down from what she just said. And it's like that little zoom in on the eyes where she kind of like, they, uh, they, they like shrink in size as she's focusing on her. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I was just like, huh, actually, okay, I like that. (laughs) (laughs) And then she showed Fluttershy poses that she could do, which do work in real life. Those poses if you're if you're starting to feel insecure or um less confident doing those poses actually does help you to feel more confident in what you're saying and, and doing and when and you so, feel more speaking of the, more confident yeah. the, 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 speaking of those poses i feel they should have possibly done different why well, slightly different because they're very human poses like confidence <laughs> poses yeah but i think There's that always, was i think that was what tied you know like they it was a visual for anybody that's watching yeah, to be able to outrightly say, okay, that she's exuding confidence, yeah. like as a four-legged pony standing on two legs and being confident <laughs> about it is like <laughs> I mean, I, it presents it well. But just like rewind, like Glenn, you know this, and they're like rewinding the video and all that. It's yeah. sort of hilarious how human of a pose it is. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just like how how you know as 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 a um a humanoid with uh, two two legs and two arms how are you supposed to uh like even even discover what a horse would get in what pose a horse would get into to become confident yeah they needed to <laughs> they needed to amp it up because mm. they already stand on four legs so like yeah. puffing their chest out wouldn't really like convey the level of confidence that they wanted i i mm. would assume as like from the, maybe uh, in the world uh, that was a pose uh, created by dragons, and they're just emulating it. That's possible. Now it's been bothering me for it's been bothering me forever. I was trying to remember, like the first Fluttershy's look, who it reminds me of. It reminds me of the headmistress of the um, Shadowbolt School and Friendship Games. What? Oh, okay. Shadowbolt School and Friendship Games? Oh, uh, Miss Cinch. Miss Cinch. Yeah, no, Miss Cinch. Yeah. That hair, like, and look of the first Flash reminds me a lot of Miss Cinch. She's like, where have I seen I thought of Midnight, the, the, um, like, the Midnight Rarity thing when, like, the, the table, the yeah, whole, like, yeah, Starlight it. thing. Ugh, yeah. what was it? Yeah, the evil, like, where Nightmare Moon takes over Rarity. Reality. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Where, oh, uh, it reminded me comments. of that way more than it did cinch. Hmm. But, uh, you did definitely see more for your argument, Derek. Uh, like the whole thing, like like the whole acting and like the whole dressy look of Flo Shy in that instance. Yeah, very much a teacher. Uh, oh, the outfit, yeah, yeah. yeah. The um, hair, though, reminded me more of... Uh, the alternate reality rarity. Alternate reality rarity? Don't you mean comic relic rarity? Well, it is an alternate reality. It's not canon, is it? <laughs> is it? It's, dep- it's, it's, sort depend- of canon. It's, it's dependent on whether or not if the show has anything that contradicts it or not. Okay. Yeah, that's that's where it changes. Yeah, that's that's what the that's what the writers say about like the comics continuity. Right. Mm. No, yeah, Miss Finch is a very di- yeah. She has a very different hairstyle. Ha ha! <laughs> but it is like the same. But it is yeah. very same, like a, a very te- like not just a teacher dress, but like a very super formal teacher like attire. Uh, that's why I think it reminds me of her. Mm-hmm. Um, <sighs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's more of like a. An infinite sort of symbol, where like uh, the front, uh, front part of her hair. Yeah, it curls around and such. Well, I guess uh, any other mm. thoughts? Did anyone else get the feeling that this sh- this episode felt kind of short? Not really. No. I thought I thought it was well length. Yeah. I felt. It- it so, might have been I've, just because it was in a one setting and that kind of yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I could I could see what you're saying. Where... That's, that's a definite yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh <laughs> that's new. 
um, where it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was definitely where I think they lost you the hairstyle. Yeah, also, that's what I was like. That's the for the rarity. Also, thing. incidentally, with um, also I just found out with the new Google Hangout setup that you post a link apparently makes it like a little text image above your head. Yeah, you <laughs> don't have the screen. Did that. It's, uh, oh, no, yeah, it's been doing that. Yeah, that was that was all the time to tell you when um, whenever someone's uh, talking. Oh uh, wait! Oh wait! Oh, I thought you were talking about nightmare already. Oh, I, <laughs> I thought I thought you were talking like, about. I have I no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I don't know what the, no, I mean, I, you could have said like something about like this wasn't involving the comics. <laughs> like what? you were referring to the actual shows, like alternate. Yeah, that's what lines. I said. The one from the alternate reality with the table and starlight. Well, the comics. You guys were talking about the comics. Yeah, you <laughs> brought up the comics. She didn't I bring said up the, the comics show. at all. It yeah. could have been the five that was very generic. You could have meant alternate world. Not what? like alternate I said world. alternate reality. That means everything changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's not, what I mean. Carlos, no, I'm citing the cadet on this one. <laughs> <laughs> The time. You can't just have a DC explained on. which scenario I was talking about. So you're the only one that wasn't on the same page. It's an alternate reality, not an alternate universe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. The table is still there. <laughs> <You're still crazy. laughs> it's the reason why Undertale uh, AUs are called AUs and not ARs. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Undertale augmented reality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I liked the episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say it was a, I would describe it as a fine episode, as in, no, I would say one of the, at least I hope this ain't going to be one of the better ones of the season. <laughs> but I mean, it was like just a good, fine episode. Not, I would say good or great, but like just good. Three out of five. Um, <laughs> Three uh, out of five. It's a good episode. It, it, for yeah. me, for me, like in my rating scale, it's sort of like it's like in that same mesh, just like the premiere. It's like it's controversial, but it can also be considered as good in some aspect. And I feel like it might etch out the premiere now as like like possibly the only good contender right now for the season. Uh, Interesting. I we just... shall have to catch up, Quillo, so that we can yes, understand you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> so, I liked the episode. <laughs> I, as for me, as for me, until you started explaining about like uh, about the controlled setting and such, I was very much in the controversial territory with this episode. It's like it had its good elements, but it also had its bad elements or confusing elements that really had me middling. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I'm glad that I could help then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because, like, I didn't want it to feel terrible about the season eight, four episodes in. Just being like, why? You're like, there's no hope. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, there's no hope. I mean, it's like, it's Josh Hamilton, the same guy behind Secrets and Pies. Oh, wait, what? He yeah, wrote Josh Secrets and Pies? Yes, Josh Hamilton. Yes, oh, that was, that was I, oh, okay. Especially uh, after Nick Compelone just basically made me just... Mm, uh, made me move. Okay, wait. So the person that wrote this episode wrote Secrets and Pies as well? Yes, yes. Okay. That explains the pacing then. Because that one felt kind of off as well in terms mm -hmm. of pacing. Yeah, I, can, I will say I did enjoy this more than Secrets and Pies. I can definitely Same. say that for sale. Especially since like Fluttershy is kind of likable as a douche. I mean, rainbow any day. I see you said the BS word earlier, so that is true. So that goes the PG rating. <laughs> all right, man. All right, man. All right, then. All right, then. Right, 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 officially an M-rated stream. M-rated stream. Um, <laughs> rainbow is the suckiest of all the movies. That actually does remind me. I think that might be that might sort of be a flaw of this writer. Um, at least think what was it another episode? There's no secrets and fine. There was like two. Um, oh, triple dread, and also parental guidance for season seven. Really? Yeah, I oh, think I can pick up a trend of the writers yeah. that they can. They seem <laughs> the Hamilton seems to 
take the main character sort of more out of character than like just for the story setup. Um, yeah, because like think about like both Secrets and Pies and uh, Print of Gladiance had Rainbow Dash sort of like acting really out of character, just sort of weird, like with the weird pie avoidance thing, and then also with the way she basically snapped on her parents. Mm. No, no I mean, like, the, the, the snapping at her parents was something reasonable, and I could easily imagine what Rainbow doing. Since yeah, she, yeah, like, but just I mean, just like the way her character was in her entire life. Lifetime of having like it's a slow kind of build up. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like, like seriously. Like, if I didn't know any better, I would have imagined this would have been like her immediate reaction upon Zephyr Breeze if he ever got closer to her, like her blowing up. Like, yeah. If if Zephyr ever like really more, like started <laughs> to do her over like if if he moved to Ponyville and just like yeah, I'm gonna live with my love and then started moving into her house. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oof. Rainbow's just gonna be like, you're gonna be here. Itself, run, Zephyr, run! <laughs> and the insanity that follows. The Zephyr episode was so long ago. Mm. Season six only. Season six. Mm. Uh, I remember when we were talking about that episode. Yeah. I actually might have done that. Yeah. Zephyr Breeze. I think the only time we ever seen him after that was that one episode from Equestria Girls, Girls Shorts. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Like, seriously, with the surfboard. Still was feeling a bit cringy, especially since he's supposed to be younger than Fluttershy. That towers over Rainbow. Yeah, I well, feel like... That's boys, though. That's, that's, that's <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> I know, that, like... But, people. <laughs> but I feel that in general, but I feel Zephyr Breeze would have been better if they sort of would distinctly make him look younger than, like, the rest of the main six, and also... Yeah. Um... um like if they actually would have brought in the teenage like uh, prony body back then, like if, um, if it was scrawny, you reckon? Uh, scrawny would like just look young because like the way he acts and like his voicing and all that, like it sounds like he, like it very like shocking that like he is the younger brother. Well, <laughs> like, that also depends on what age everybody actually is. Mm. In all honesty. It's yeah, because like, like, like Fluttershy could be 25 and he could be 24. Or 23. Mm. Like, oh. 23. Especially with that, like... And the other thing about, like, guy voices is they change way more drastically than women's voices. And a lot quicker, too. Yeah, a lot quicker. Like, heckin' 16, 15 mm. sometimes. I've met 13-year-olds that have, like, the deepest booming voices I've ever heard. And I'm like, what in the hey? <laughs> what is going on? Who are you? Uh, like, why are genetics you are a weird thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it did make sense why they depicted him as being older because of the whole narrative. Um, th- with him, like struggling to find a job or something. Yeah. So he. Yeah. So it makes sense to make him look like he's, you know, uh, around the age where you just graduated from college or something. Right. Or, right. Yeah, which would be like if you are on track, it'd be like twenty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I, I was I was technically supposed to graduate from my three year course last year, um, so I'm currently twenty one. I think. <laughs> Welcome to the adult party, man. <laughs> <laughs> Proud to be here. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So. I didn't get any bad, like, really bad vibes off of this episode. Yeah. Uh, 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 honestly, this episode has a lot more good vibes than uh, uh, good vibes than last week. Just yeah, it's, it feels. It I'm feels, scared. I'm scared. You guys were like hyping up last week, and I have no idea what happened. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Like, so uh, I'll have to find out after this. <laughs> it's like it's like it's sort of like it comes to realize about a certain don't, rider after season six. It's just it's about a okay, realizing okay, realizing okay. about them. Um, it's just like a slow realization. Yeah, I, would, I yeah. would heavily encourage you to comment on the video for last week and <laughs> to say uh, if you want to just say like, oh, this is this is like say, oh, this is not that bad, or oh, this really was that bad, or something. Like that. <laughs> Yeah, and then like a uh, have and this have like ninja dumps it up or like uh, our oh, you just... mean for us to record it when like or to record our thoughts afterward is what you're saying, right? After we uh, watch or last just... 
<laughs> and tell you. <laughs> I mean, actually, uh, either like if you just want to create like a short one or two minute summary and just uh, You'll for last week's this episode section and then put it here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can just like edit it in. Like, just send me the audio and I can just edit it in. I know, but I'm saying you'll 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 edit out the section of you talking about editing it in, and then put it here, right? <laughs> you won't leave this section in of us talking well, about you editing. No, I always leave the awkward edited stuff in. No! I just go, I'll do like a post credit thing or something like that. <laughs> We're doing uh, it live. <laughs> so, um, um, I guess I guess you guys can look forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. It's it's gonna be like who knows maybe like ten ish minutes from now and then <laughs> mm. uh, for us it'll be like forty five minutes from now. Yeah, yeah. Like a time warp. Yes. Yeah. And oh, that's boy. my call. So I have to go. Bye. 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 All right. I guess with that said, any final thoughts before we stop the broadcast? Uh, this is a pretty good episode. I kind of find it interesting. Still going out? Keep talking. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, <keep it> going. <laughs> no, I had nothing to say. I thought you were saying oh, something. Oh, oh. It sounded oh. like you were going to say something again. No. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say something. Oh, like that. oh I finished or something. Okay, okay, okay. I was going to say this. This episode seems to be the one that tries to make the most rational excuse for Rarity to rely upon Fluttershy in comparison to every single episode beforehand when it comes about mm. her critiques. I really but, wish, like, on that point, I really wish that Rainbow Dash was the last they asked. Because one of the episodes previous, uh, was it with whom this? With at whom least not the Sweetie very Bell first you would have asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, with, with, with the episode with Sweetie Belle, the... Uh, for whom the Sweetie Belle toils. Yeah, yes. for whom the Sweetie Belle toils. Um, like, the way Spike said something in that episode made me laugh hysterically. Because... Uh, because he was at the after the after party thing for their their play, mm -hmm. and they asked, "Oh, where's like where's our sisters?" <laughs> and he's like, "Sorry, girls. Uh, like Rarity has all of them going with her to like finish the dresses." And Scootaloo asks, "Even Rainbow Dash?" And Spike says, "Yeah, she fell way behind." <laughs> like <laughs> like he says it with such like oh a weighted God. thing. I was like, oh my god, that was perfect. Like, it was the best thing ever. He's just like, she already fell way behind. Like, <laughs> there's everyone. no way she would have asked if it, if it wasn't a dire situation. Okay, so okay. I wish this episode had put her at the very end of the line so that, um, like, she goes from Dash to Fluttershy. <laughs> like, Dash could be like, um, okay, um. So you ask every single one of our friends, no, he didn't talk to Fluttershy. Wait, why did you talk to me before Fluttershy? It just, it would have been so perfect to line up that way. And then and yeah, I'm like, no. I, 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 I totally would get it. It's like, like, honestly, like, uh, maybe we could have had, like, say, like, Applejack then Rainbow Dash. Because the fact that uh, Applejack was kind of, like, dirt in line was kind of, like, it was kind of hurting me there. I still have honest Apple flashbacks. I liked Honest Apple, though. Wait, you did? Yeah. I was there for the React, I think, where I was talking about how um, the escalation of her character over the course, because she was getting more confident in what she was saying, whether or not she knew about fashion, she knew about the conventionalism thing. And so she let that rule her, like, guiding uh, remarks, which in turn hurt people. But her accepting it as truth was where it was wrong because it's her truth, not the truth. And I thought that was a really nice lesson to bring about where it's like not everything that is your truth, something that you understand as relevant to you doesn't make it relevant to everybody else. 
Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I definitely don't remember any sort of events like that happening when we were reacting to that episode. Because if there were, it could have been, it could have gone the same way as today. Because yeah, that definitely doesn't remind me of like you being there for honest. I think. Well, I think actually, I might have come in at the like halfway mark. Then it was something where I came in and was like, I appreciated the montage and why. Uh, I think it might have been one of the ones where like you recorded separately and I edited them together. Maybe it was something like that. It was it was definitely something where I didn't watch the episode with you guys. I know that much. (laughs) Like I may have accidentally jumped into the call and you guys had already been like talking about it. But like yeah, I I remember specifically saying that uh, the montage was actually a brilliant way of showing something that Applejack can appreciate, which is the hard work that goes into fashion, not the idea of what fashion represents. I remember bringing that up for sure <laughs> because I was like, Applejack appreciates hard work. That's her thing, you know? She she may not know anything about fashion. She doesn't understand the difference between like certain stitching patterns or different fabric materials or anything like that or anything for why an aesthetic would be a certain way. But showing her interacting with the other ponies while they're working on their on their outfits shows her the dedication they have to their craft which is something she can appreciate i remember bringing that up <laughs> do not say i did not bring that up <laughs> we need a flashback to that moment because i remember bringing it up you didn't bring it up <laughs> just kidding. I, I remember I, bringing that part up though because like that i liked that episode i did because i'm like it makes total sense that applejack would push her honesty a little further and think that just because she holds something true doesn't mean it's the truth and that was a really nice lesson for her to learn which is also another rarity like showing the thing episode um with this one how did we even get on this topic? <laughs> because of like the you whole brought up reason. Honest Apple, and I don't remember how we got there. Okay, I, I brought up Honest Apple because like it, but like because of like Rarity's business sense being like one oh of her right points. right okay yeah 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 and like for me I didn't think that it was like the worst thing for her to ask Fluttershy, but no, I think well, she knew um, by asking everyone else first. I think she knew that she. Um, because of, like, uh, Fluttershy's certain sensitivities towards situations, she didn't want to overstress her and put her in that situation, but since she was literally the last pony she could ask, she asked and was like, all right, if she says yes, then I'll give her the rundown and hope for the best. (laughs) So, like, yeah, I was like, it, it made sense to me that she took that, like moment but i just really wish they had brought the like rainbow dash thing in <laughs> because that that line from spike still it make it cracks me up every single time <laughs> like oh i need to find that clip and send it to dc just so that it's there but it was great Ugh. so i liked the episode <laughs> <laughs> i'm There's sorry a... no 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 it's cool cadet it's just I think you have not been here for so long that I either haven't realized before how completely analytical you are about these sorts of episodes. <laughs> yeah, but, I am. But like, I I usually get interrupted. That's the problem. You guys start nitpicking a thing and I'm like, oh my God, can I finish what I was going to say? Otherwise, we're going to go 20 minutes on this other thing. <laughs> mm. uh. <laughs> oh my. Ah. Uh. It's happened multiple times. <laughs> it's funny. But I really like I really liked the episode and I really liked the uh, honest apple episode. Mm. So that's where I stand <laughs> or sit since I'm sitting at my desk. <laughs> um <laughs> The only other thing I was going to really bring out was um I guess the only reason why Rarity didn't ask Spike was probably because of age. I guess that was the only reason because she asked around a lot of ponies, including Shirley, for some weird reason. I'm like, Shirley hasn't been relevant in so long that you actually asked her. And I'm like, oh my god, Shirley, how long has it been since you've been relevant in something that hasn't been in crap? 
I mean, my God, the only actor role recently was in Car Before the Pony, man. Just like, <laughs> that episode is so bad because it's like, why? Why would you fall? That episode awesome. makes me cringe, dude. You guys know what I just realized? What? This is an echo of putting your hoof down. Yeah, that's what I mentioned earlier. Like when I, I when must I heard have it. missed that point entirely. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> like, I, was I think to... it's because he talks really fast. I, it's I, I do. Like, I, wait. do. <laughs> I do. Or just I because do. I I don't talk that much and I just I don't know. I, I mean, I like I. Even, world. I mean, I even made mention of it like at the very beginning when Angel threw the bowl at Fluttershy's hands, like. Flashbacks, yes. yeah, well, yeah. You, you know, were mentioning the flashbacks. But flashbacks all the way back to, oh, putting your head down. That one scene you had to start it with that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, but it's like I'm okay, I'm okay with Angel. I'm just okay with Angel. It's just like, just a, like a, eh. like the only gripes I really had about better, the episode, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, he's not really being forced to do anything extremely jerkish. Yeah, I mean, even in season. Not- Antagonist anymore. Yeah, I mean, like season three, episode ten was probably like the last um, round of him being in, like an antagonist, like intentionally. And even then, that was just because like he wanted to get his tail fluff when Spike wasn't even paying attention to his needs. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, I, I just felt like all the gripes I really had about the episode all had to do with like the confusing feel I had like during like the shopping scenes. Like I didn't had any idea what the episode was going for. I felt like it was going for like something a bit more higher tier than what the show is usually gone for, and that's a good thing. It's not going for like a higher tier stuff of like, oh, oh we're just going for like something that's like a, oh, we're just going to jump from like one form of a relationship to another in a certain case. But it's like instead, it's like we're going for something as you mentioned, uh, how to handle like different personas in the workplace and or in public. Mm-hmm. And if that was what the episode was going for, it wasn't very obvious, which I can deduct a few points off of, but it still mostly gets a bit more positive points into the good category then. Because I now finally get an idea about the direction of the episode. Yay. <laughs> but but like, oh yeah, and also the time stuff going on, like because it was supposed to be like around two days that all this was going on. Oh yeah. So like yeah. I think the like the fact that the raccoons showed up in Ponyville is where the next day was supposed to be. Like, they left that evening and got mm. there in the morning. Because we do see Rarity's, like, Rarity had said in the episode, tomorrow is the Canterlot show. And then the raccoons show up at Twilight's castle. And then, or is it the school? It's the school. Okay, it's yeah. The... I've seen images of it, and I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it wasn't a school, it wasn't a castle. It was a school. school. Twilight was at her desk. It was at a, it was at a desk, yeah. So, but like the thing, um, I appreciated that the time was sort of like jumped that way. Even though it wasn't like blatantly obvious. It wasn't obvious unless you were listening to the audio. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. again, Rarity does say tomorrow's fashion show and then we see the raccoons leave. They suddenly arrive with the commercial break, isn't it? And then he's like uh, talking to Spike. So it's tomorrow for the show, which I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's a we're not we're not skipping any beats with that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry, Alex. Oh no 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 no, <laughs> that's why I've been tired all day. No, I'm just teasing you. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been God. a while. My humor is lost. <laughs> You've lost your comedic identity. Now you're going for like the teasing. I know, my comedic soda is gone. It's all of my analytic. Like that's the thing that made me laugh about what you said too earlier. You know, but is uh, you're like I, I've never like I don't remember you being this analytical, and I was like, okay. See, that's another Sona issue. <laughs> I remember, like... The fact, the fact that we were even talking about Sonas in the first place is, like, uh, the fact that we were talking earlier about Persona. It's just like, God! Why did they have all days have to be that? <laughs> I didn't think that would have been brought up. But here we are. We're talking about the Persona you put up in the public, and hopefully that means Fluttershy is probably, like, the best character now to receive Personas mm. now. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, what were you going to say, Alex? I, I remember like how, how much you picked up on little details on yeah, in details the episode. Yeah, details are Oh, yeah. background details are so great. Oh, I love them. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> with this one, they had a lot of lighting tricks, which I was very happy about. Oh, that's really nice. That's really nice to hear. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, you're able to pick up like those sorts of details. I guess I have like a bigger pension for like remembering about certain stuff that uh, about like writing credits or like that. Just like remembering stuff that happened in earlier seasons easier compared to other people. Mm. But. You definitely yeah. know the writers a lot better than I do. I don't pay attention to the writers that often. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really bad at that. <laughs> eh. I mean, like, uh, I mean, like, I shouldn't, fa- I shouldn't fault you guys on that because, like, that shouldn't really, like, determine, like, what you guys should think about, like, for, like, each episode. Like, it's just recently, it's just, like, I've been. It's been more noticeable <sighs> based on that. Based it's on been that more noticeable in this season. Mm. The way I think of this show is that is is that it's something that exists rather than a product of someone's making. So I that that kind of leads and causes like uh, me to not focus on the writer so much mm, because and, there are people there. There's multiple hands dipping into the episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 dipping like yeah. For example, Fame and Misfortune that definitely wasn't the product of the writer in that case. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just the failed script that the writer didn't want to like add green light, but then some editors were like, "Let's edit this part. Let's replace Spike with Starlight," and boom, we got ourselves an episode because we're going to put out this episode. Right. So like, yeah, I I have a harder time paying attention to writers specifically. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree with you All on right. that point. Now. All, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get any other any other closing thoughts before we. <laughs> we had a large tangent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I liked the episode. I think that's the fifth time I've said that. <laughs> mm. uh, this episode was great in using like a uh, re- like the continuity alarm a lot. Just being like, "Hey, remember these uh, uh, these uh, these uh, receptionists that were hired by Rainbow Dash in the first place from Sound of Our Review? Oh, remember the raccoons that were hanging around the uh, the department store? It's just like, oh my god! In fact, they were using like main characters. It's like." The Smoky Family. I think Remember how even... much Fluttershy was a dick in putting your hoof down? <laughs> <laughs> Remember? Let's bring it back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that's sort of different in a, in and of itself, too, is that in putting your hoof down, she wasn't putting on a Sona. She was actually changing her regular self. Yeah. And that but was it, what made her, like, nasty in that respect. It was similar in the way how it, like, bleeded into her... her Right. Uh, real life though right yeah but like with, with this one it's more uh i feel like it's easier to detach because um culpability because she, like... well not only that but like uh she's in an environment that she's completely unaware of she doesn't know anything so the automatic response is definitely to try and put on a sona so that you appear knowledgeable in some way like what is it <laughs> I've done that in an interview before <laughs> where like I have absolutely no idea about um specifically like registers. This is when this is when in like 2012 or something like that. Way back when for me. <laughs> I hadn't ever had a job uh as a cashier before. I was an inventory person. Mm-hmm. So like pretending that I knew what I was doing helped in that respect in like making sure that I presented myself well both to the customer and to the management like it it the system was like from really early 90s so it was like yeah. it was just a black screen where you had to input the data yourself and it was like oh man <laughs> it was bad mm. but um like i i can see where the comparison lies in the way it escalates and the way that um the like uh with with, with Putting your hoof down, it was phrases that she could say to get what she's feeling out in order to get what she wants. With this one, it was an outfit that she embodied the persona with. So, like, like, I can see the comparison that you have. For me, though, I feel like with this one, it was more played on the fact that she was completely a fish out of water in every aspect. She had never done customer service like that before. She didn't know anything about fashion. She'd never worked in a store. So like 
it, it, it you know, as an introvert, which we know she is, <laughs> uh, she got she got exhausted just from that first customer. Like, right, right. You could see that visually. She got exhausted from the first customer. So, like, that is something that happens to introverts. Being able to yeah. put on a persona in that respect alleviate some of that stress because you're not presenting yourself so it's easier for people to like it's easier for you to brush off like the the idea that oh that person doesn't like me oh they don't like my sona that's what it is so like i felt like it was easier for her to go even deeper this episode <laughs> than it was the last one that's why it spiraled mm. so quickly it happened in a day we saw returning customers being shoved out of the door in the span of the day right you know? So like with with the other one, it was like a couple days, and it yeah. happened towards people she knew and loved. In this one, it was to strangers. It happened once with the other pe- with the like people that she did love, but not in uh, the same respect as what happened in putting your hoof down, where she actually belittled Pinky and Rarity for their like frivol- frivolous jobs, quote unquote. And let's you not know? forget about those fourteen uh, tourists as well, just before that moment. Yeah, exactly. So like, but like things like that, um, there with, with this, there is a bit more of a separation for me just because a Sona is really easy to like use in order to protect oneself that way with the mm-hmm. putting your hoof down. It was her becoming aggressive as herself, as flutter right. shy. She was getting angry and aggressive in order to get things that herself wouldn't get. And so the comparison that's where that part sort of like dissipates for me in the comparison. I agree with you that like it's it's relatively similar. I feel like this is a uh, specifically for like viewers like us who have right. sons and put on uh, personalities in order to exactly, yeah. entertain and separate ourselves. Because like <laughs> me, I'm definitely an introvert. I sound very like bubbly and happy on this on yeah, this podcast yeah. whenever i'm on here um uh when i'm working on a project i sound very serious and i i i feel like i'm you know in charge of something like I, mm-hmm. i'm in control of something and that's where the, the idea of a sona comes from is that you want to be able to have control over something mm. with the, uh, putting your hoof down it felt more like yes she wanted control of something but she was going about the wrong way to get it in this one, she still was going about the wrong way to get the control um, yeah, with how yeah. fast it escalated. But, like, Sonas in and of themselves aren't a bad thing. You know? Right. Like, as we saw with Rarity. Because Rarity, as a business pony, she was able to maintain control of the situation with that rowdy customer at the beginning. And yeah. that's the part that I like, is that it, it may have been subtle that Rarity was the example in this episode for how to correctly portray a persona Mm -hmm. but like i feel like they it was executed well in the um the finality of it like looking back on it i'm like oh yeah absolutely it was totally great (laughs) when i was watching it i was like oh that was really nice but like after the fact i'm like oh okay now it all makes sense because it all tied together at the end yeah i think it they like i like when they really drove home drove the bit where uh that these were personas was that one little bit where rarity was telling all of those personas to leave and they kept popping up behind her. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. As though she was able to let go of them, which again, like I was saying earlier, ties to the idea that it's easy, it's easier for Fluttershy to be like, okay, so that she doesn't like that persona. So I'm getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm, I'm removing the barrier or taking off the, uh, the mask the mask for that character so that it's me again you know mm. and that's when she's like i owe you guys an apology that's when she was like uh remorseful as the persona is she wasn't but like right. when when she got to her core she was like i'm i'm sorry you guys this was this was a, a terrible thing that i tried to do <laughs> and they're like well <laughs> like i was i was mean you know <laughs> mm-hmm. i really like how it played out i appreciate the the controlled environment they gave it and it was an easy thing to relate to as a customer oh, service yeah. person <laughs> yeah. you know like, like anybody I've, that has worked in customer service <laughs> like i've worked like for five summers uh in a trading post at summer camp and uh 
you know, mm-hmm. I've been behind the cashier and I don't, for me, Ro, really, I, I don't really put on a, a persona when I'm behind the cashier. I, I just really act like myself and that kind of, you know, helps me, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, yeah. I still do maintain like the, you know, helpful customer service personality, but but I still try to keep fun uh, to have fun with it. Yeah. And in that respect, there are, you are able to take elements of yourself and bring them forth so that it's more prevalent that way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So like with, with this episode, it, Fluttershy does have confidence. We've seen that multiple times in the previous episodes where she's building it and slowly getting better about it. So like, when she's presented with something that she doesn't have confidence in, she's able to draw out the confidence and put it into like the the mask of, you know, the the uppity sales pony. Right. You know? So like I I understand what you're saying too about not necessarily having a persona or maybe just highlighting more qualities about yourself that uh need to be presented in that situation. Mm-hmm. Like being friendly, being helpful going out of your way to help a stranger with something you know yeah yeah. those are elements that people have inside of them as i'm sure you do but you need to bring it further when you're at the workplace right (laughs) so like yeah i get what you were saying yeah yeah Mm. but did you like the episode (laughs) i liked it yeah okay good What about you, Yodoba? <laughs> um, <laughs> as mentioned before, like um, you might not know, like a uh, controversial just is like the new term I have for like my mid tier rating. Which oh, okay. means it's like it's kind of like it's on the fence ish. It's on the fence, but it's better on the fence than like a, a lot of other stuff. Like it's a, it's, a, it's more it's more po- it's more positive than negative, honestly. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm I'm willing to give it like um right now just saying like it's a good episode. It's it's a bit confusing with like um. Like what it shows, but like, heck, it it kind of like a it showed me like a the good positivity it could give for like a you guys. I mean, like two, you two are like the two quietest people of the chat. Yet you managed to come yeah. the call for like the last fifteen minutes. I'm just saying, I'm really happy to see that. Honestly, it's like it's like it's kind of nice having like a bit of a role reversal, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was kind of weird though. I don't really have much to say about personality because that was the gimmick I wanted to make for like my own channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was kind of a bit off, but eh. maybe I'm just more of like the big ideas guy on that uh, sort of front. I'm just like you guys go more in depth about it, even more than perhaps even I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> no, it's 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 cool. I just just need to refine myself. Or just need to find something else in order to like a push on the topic. Need to find something you can really rant on. That's where my quietness really stems from. Is that I need to find something which I can rant on because I know a lot a lot about the subject or whatever. Mm-hmm. So if I so if there's an episode where, um, you know, I don't really find or I don't have a lot of knowledge about of like the subjects presented in that episode, I don't talk a lot about it. Nah. Oh, well, yeah, and like the, the quirks during like when we're watching it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, but um, I guess to, time to wrap it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Juicy. Right. <laughs> it's been so no long. I missed you guys. <laughs> no. I missed talking miss to you about too. the show. I miss you too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but I guess uh, see you all next time. Yeah, bye. 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 bye.